there everyone, how you doing today? I hope you're all well. Today we're going to go into r slash entitled people, where the people are, as you might guess, very entitled. If you enjoy, like and subscribe, leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the stories. And without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Entitled Millionaire Client <clears throat> I'm a decorator and began working with a couple of bad apples over a year ago when I was still getting established independently. This one client has been obsessed with getting the best deal and bargain on every single item we purchased. This is a $3 million home and she will squabble over even a $10 price difference. She has zero respect for our livelihood. During design presentations, she whips out her laptop to search for cheaper versions of my selections. She owns a business that has nothing to do with design, and used her tax ID to fraudulently open wholesale accounts with my vendors, which are only for members of the trade. It's so disrespectful. I have devoted years to curating my list of vendors and hearing how to procure beautiful pieces, only for someone so entitled around me to buy wholesale instead of purchasing the product through me and violating my policy. This woman has an eagle eye for defects that she uses to try to get credits and refunds. She ordered her own shades and got the wrong size then spent hours on the phone until customer service agreed to give her another damn credit. She manipulated my plumber and carpenter into lowering their rates using this tone and acting as if she's on a different class than them. This woman thinks she is entitled to decide how much she thinks someone is worth and how much she feels like paying after their work is done. After over a year, we haven't completed the project, I have designed some rooms three times and helped on rooms that weren't even on the scope because I just wanted something to get done so I can collect my check and run for the hills. Finally, I said I cannot continue the project without charging her a new fee. We have gone way over the time I charged for and there's no end in sight. She hasn't focused, she hasn't gotten caught up in menu details and literal dollars and cents at a time. She derails meetings by changing focus from room to room. I sent her a bill for the balance owed and deducted the last credit she wanted. This was unacceptable to her. I should waive this fee and send her a check for the credit. What about the hours upon hours of wasted time where she asked for redesigns again and again? She pointed out this is a word-of-mouth business, and she already has an incredible new designer who doesn't mind her stealing their vendors, and has cheaper prices, I guess. I told her to go ahead and see how things go if she behaves the same way with her new decorator. I called the vendor for her dining room wallpaper, and she has opened an account with them. My vendor revoked her access, and she will not be able to order the wallpaper unless she pays retail. Well... Too bad, because my price was below retail. Classic entitled person screw up. It's a small victory, but helps ease the pangs of disgust and violation. Chemical Warfare Karen I'm a shift supervisor for a retail drugstore chain. I'm the manager on duty. I came into this story in the, somewhere in the middle of... So before is just what other customers told me happened. Like all drug stores, we have a pharmacy. Given that it's at the end of November, flu season is in full swing, and we have our fair share of customers coughing and sneezing. It's rush hour, and we have a fairly long line in the pharmacy. Suddenly, a woman, Karen, gets out of line, grabs a can of Lysol disinfectant spray off the shelf, and douses each customer in the spray. Karen then makes her way to the front of the line. She originally was next to pick up her prescription. A customer, who I'll call John, first confronts Karen to knock it off, then confronts Karen and tells her to get in the back of the line. 
Karen screams at John to pick on someone his own size and leave a tiny woman like her who's about to have heart surgery alone. Karen's about five feet tall, maybe a hundred pounds in her seventies. John is about six foot three inches, about 250 pounds in his forties. This is when pharmacy calls me over to handle the situation. First thing I notice when I get there is a smell I can't identify. Karen then yells at John to go fight her husband in the parking lot. He'll beat John to a pulp. Then an old man about five foot five shows up telling Karen to just get a prescription so they can get out of there. I assume it's her husband. I take this opportunity to ask John what's going on. John, along with several other customers, tell me what happened. The smell is Lysol disinfectant spray. John apologizes to me, stating he just wanted Karen to knock it off. He didn't mean to escalate the situation. I quietly tell the customers that I think she's a little bit crazy, but her husband seems to have her under control, so let's just get them out of there ASAP. Then Karen slams the can of Lysol on the counter, saying she's not paying for it. I confront Karen, saying she took it off the shelf. She damaged it. She now has to pay for the damaged goods. Karen screams that she's about to have heart surgery and she can't have gems. I tell her that she it still gives her no right to assault customers and damaged product. First, she demands my manager. When I tell her I am the manager on duty, she demands my name and business card to get me fired. Karen's husband calms her down and says he'll just call corporate in the morning to ask what the policy is. Karen gets her prescription and the Lysol and walks out with her husband, cursing and screaming the whole time. Well, more like her husband is trying to get her out as quickly as possible. I talk to the customers. A few of them crack a joke that they are all sanitized. One brings up that it sounds like a Karen might have dementia or Alzheimer's. A few minutes later, I'm in the vitamin aisle, stocking shelves, when Karen's husband asks me where a certain vitamin is. He's talking to me like the previous events never happened. It's been two days. He never called corporate. Co-worker demands I spend lunch giving her a free manicure. This happened a couple of weeks ago. I work in the government office in my province. It's a rewarding job, but doesn't pay very well, and I absolutely love having my nails done. My nails have been pretty crud my entire life. Flaky and weak. No matter what oil or supplement, whatever I try to use, I have a bad habit of chewing them. So I bought myself a $50 gel kit from Amazon and started doing them myself about a year ago. I have a nice little setup at this point, and I'll do my friend's nails from time to time. I've also completely stopped chewing them. You go, OP. That's hard to do. I bought my kit to work the other day because I was going to a friend's house after to do her nails as a favor before a party. My friend offered to buy a pizza, and we were planning to watch a movie afterwards. I made the mistake of discussing this plan with a co-worker when she noticed the kit sitting on top of my locker when she came in. Small lockers, and I didn't want to put on the floor where I put my dirty, walk-to-work shoes. Oh my god. This woman, who's 50-ish, spent four hours leading up to my lunch badgering me about how I should give her a manicure on our lunch break. I had my favorite teal shade on, and she talked about how much she loved it, and how she never gets her nails done, because her husband thinks it's a waste of money, and how I can get some practice, it would be so nice of me, and on and on and on. I said at first gently, more than once, and then... Pretty firmly, I would be eating lunch on my break before I gave up and just responded to everything she said with a non-committal grunt. When I got up to go, she tried to act like I'd agreed to it and would grab her stuff and meet me in the lunchroom. I had to look her in the eye and say, insert name here, I'm going to eat my lunch during 30 minutes. I'm not giving you a free manicure. Please drop this. You're making me uncomfortable. 
She has refused to speak to me or look at me directly, since she's mostly remote and kind of annoying that's not a problem. She's also crap-talked me behind my back. Some of my co-workers have told me about it, and she's a huge gossip with a massive chip on her soldier, shoulder. And everything, so I can only assume most people in the office have heard her harrowing tale. Luckily, everyone who has talked to me about it agrees she's being a complete clown. But seriously, who the heck asks a co-worker you're barely even friendly with for a free manicure? Let alone insist on it for hours! My boss yelled at me for needing a chair. As you can see from my post in r slash malicious compliance, I used to work for a certain time-steamed business. The one with the jousty horsey men. I know I could probably say the name of the business, but I'm not going to. That job was cursed. During my time there, I had a car wreck, major surgery, and an infection that put me in the ER. But this story focuses on the car wreck and the aftermath. In October of 2020, the business had just reopened from COVID, and it was early days into coming back. I'm driving to work as normal, and driving in the left lane, trying to pass some slower-moving traffic, when I suddenly have to stop for a disabled vehicle. I stop car behind me stops and the truck behind them did not and ends up in my passenger seat. I left the scene in an ambulance and the doctor at the hospital wanted to write a note for two weeks but I begged him to make it one. See the thing about this company is that if you're clocking in for two weeks if you're not clocking in for two weeks you're terminated and marked negative for rehire. So he put me on a week leave and back to work with restrictions on standing for a couple of weeks after returning back, saying I couldn't stand more than a certain amount of time and had to sit and rest frequently. I don't I didn't think this would be a problem as a working spotlight I had plenty of sitting breaks. However, the spotlight department was also in charge of making those stupid paper crowns. This required standing for an hour and a half to two hours based on the company's timetable. I approached my boss and this is the conversation that happened. Hey boss, I'm cleared to come back to work, but I need you to read my note. It's got restrictions on it. Okay, I'll look at it later. Are you ready to go to work? Yeah, but I'll need a chair for the crowning station as I'm on a standing restriction due to back injury. And my boss freaked out. He went from calmly talking to me to yelling at me. It's not fair for you to get a chair while everyone else here has to stand. I was in a wreck. It's doctor's orders. It's not professional for you to be sitting either. I don't know what else I can do. If you're not ready to work, act like a professional. You need to clock out and go home. But I really need to work. I've got bills to pay. I don't see why this is an issue. You've already missed a week of work on this. I would have thought you'd be better by now. I'm a lot better. I just quit wasting my time and leave. I drove home in tears. And I sent him a text telling him I wanted to quit. He came back with, I'm not telling you to quit. But if you miss any more work because of this, the system will terminate you. Long story short, I ended up working and violating doctor's orders for those two weeks, all while my back was screaming in pain, because otherwise I wouldn't look professional. Anyway, that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below with your thoughts on these stories, or just how much you like my voice. It is buttery smooth after all. And I will see you all next time. Hasta la pasta.